this open season all year. Just gotta be ethical about it, right, Ants? You gotta. You have to be your own fisheries manager. Exactly. Got him. And this is what catch and release fishing is all about. Oh. Oh. Oh my God. Lean and mean. Good one, bud. And timing was right. Perfect time, perfect place, and there she be. How cool is that? I've never seen that. That is so cool. Ah. Oh, that is so cool. Mama Mia. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Prince Craft Boats, dominate the waters. Garmin Pan Optics, all seeing sonar. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. On today's Fish in Canada show, Pete and I are going bass fishing. It's something we love to do, but don't get many chances throughout the course of a season, since our goal is to cover a number of different species. That said, we did get to sneak in a trip or two this year, and as per usual, we had a yeah, blast. He loaded up on it. Today's unique bass trip has Ange and I up on Lake Lozon in Zone 10 of Ontario. I say unique because we're fishing smallmouth bass in the spring. Yep, you heard it right. These fish are just warming up from the long winter and moving shallow to feed and eventually spawn. Oh, I know, right about now you're saying, wait just a minute, is that legal? If you've been an Ontario bass angler for the last 10 years or so, then you're probably used to the end of June to mid or end of November for your open bass season. Here's the lowdown on the Zone 10 bass regulations where Pete and I are today. All waters in Zone 10 that are north of Highway 17 and all waters west of where the east bank of the Serpent River crosses Highway 17 will now have an open all year bass season. So now people from southern Ontario can make a five or six hour drive in let's say May and encounter some of the most amazing bass fishing they'll get all year. This is a great opportunity for southern Ontario bass lovers like Ann's and I. We used to have to travel to northwest Ontario for this bonus season. That's a two day drive. Now it's get in the truck early in the morning, put a half day's drive in and be fishing by noon. As awesome as this seems, the question arises, is this a good or bad Zone 10 alteration? Decisions like this one come from scientific research done by professional fisheries biologists. There are many reasons for changes like this one, some we might agree with and some we might not. It's up to us as responsible bass anglers to put procedures like catch and release into play. Our presentations for smallmouth bass in the cold water pre-spawn stages are essentially tweaked versions of our summer tactics. Take drop shotting for instance. Instead of using a four to five inch bait, try downsizing to three inch or even smaller baits. Experiment with your drop length as well. Sometimes a short six to eight inch lead is good, while other times a 14 inch plus is a ticket. Yeah. This is also a time when I feel more natural colors are necessary. Smoke. Smoke. If you're throwing a jerk bait, a four to five inch model is all you'll need. Remember though, as Ants just stated, refine your technique. Instead of a fast erratic retrieve, slow everything down. The colder the water, the longer the pauses between jerks. I'll guarantee you, you'll get 99% of your smallmouth jerkbait bites on that long pause during the cold water period. Oh yeah, little, little guy. Little guy. Little male. Yeah. Moving in. Wrong one. Come on, buddy. They're not bad fish. No, he's a little male of almost three pounds, right? Yeah, exactly. Come on. Chubby little guy, eh? All right. We'll try that again. Second verse, the same as the first. Yeah, baby. Oh, 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 better? I don't think much better. He's bigger than the last one, but I don't think he's much better. 
Wow. Nobody following. They're coming out of these, that gut there. Yeah. Come on, little girl. Little boy, probably. That's not that small, eh? Not bad. We'll take them. No gut on them at all, huh? No, zero. This fish has been caught before. And this is what catch and release fishing is all about. So you see that's well, I'll show you the good side. There's the good side, right there, right in the corner where my thumb is. And this side, it's all indented in there, it's all cut open. Obviously they still eat after catch and release. People say, why, you know, catch and release this and that, and negative. Yeah, that doesn't hurt that fish at all. He's got a little bit of a cut in the lip and that's it. See, buds. I've never seen that, that is so cool. Oh. Turned away from it, been, it too. It might have been two fish there. There be the dog. Uh -huh. I see uh, a muskie or an animal or something. An animal? Look at right, right at the shore now. What is that? In the water? Giant muskie. It's got to be a muskie. So right up there. Watch my rod tip. Look, it's moving to the yeah. right now. Watch. That's a big long thing. Look at it. That's moving. It's moving. Look at it. Behind the rock. Big yeah, muskie. Big muskie. That wow. was a muskie. Had to be. Had to be. Better come out if it was a beef. That was big, man. It's black, eh? There he is. There he is, coming offshore. Yeah, that's a musky. It's a big a musky, one. Big musky. Woo -hoo -hoo. That's cool. Right there, there's two of them. They're two together. Oh, how cool is that? They are hugging like they're gonna spawn. That is so friggin' cool. They're right there, two of them, side by side. Oh my God, that one is a nice one. Ah, oh, mama mia, pair of muskies. They're, they're, so they haven't spawned yet. If they're doing that together, they wouldn't be feeding like that together. They haven't spawned. That was the male, the smaller one, the female is a big one. That, that female was 45 to 48 inches long at least. I've never seen that, that is so cool. In the spring, many different fish species make their way to the shallows and begin their mating rituals. It's one of those rare times when anglers can set down the rods for a moment and take in the wonders of nature. In Ontario, the male smallmouth bass starts nest building at 12 and a half degrees Celsius or 54 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. And mating commences when the water warms to 16 degrees Celsius or just over 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Water temp. It's a balmy hoop. 60. 60 and a half already. If that's moving up, then I'm moving oh out. My. The male smallmouth bass excavates a small saucer shaped nest in a firm bottom like sand, mud, or gravel. Mating takes place when female bass enter the male's territory. Total spawning may last anywhere from 6 to 60 days. The female leaves after spawning. The male stays and guards the eggs for four to six days, then the fry for approximately two weeks before they disperse. The guarding period until dispersal may last from 19 to 28 days in an Ontario lake. Here he goes, here he goes, here he goes. He's coming to you. Oh, I got a lot. I'm all excited here. Turned away from it too. It might have been two fish there. I think it was two fish. One was the second one was darker. Second one, yeah. See, that's the beauty of fishing a fast bait and a slow bait. If the slow bait worked, right? Small well, he went to it, but he didn't commit to yeah. it. He didn't even. Uh, they showed themselves. Hit it. Ooh. So he went after that. Didn't want to take it. Probably too bright, too gaudy on a day like this is in the morning. So we'll downplay it a bit. There's a log right there too, eh? Yeah. Come out of nowhere. Yeah. You think you could see them and you just. They so they're getting ready. They're there. They're 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 yeah. they're they know it's time. They might be so close to ready. That's why they're not hitting, right? Yeah. Another week ago, they might have smashed something. Well, for sure. But they're still showing interest, and they're not on beds. No.
fishy. Maybe a yes. little better. A little ah. better than what? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Okay. Take care of business. Take care of business. Come here, little fella. In this cold water, they don't jump near, near as high or as much. Very lethargic in their bodies. Still fun though. Still fun to catch. Early in the year. Let's see ya. Even slow going down, they just recede slowly. They jump slow. Everything is just in slow motion. Lean and mean. That would be a male for sure. Sometimes you gotta throw it. Even if, it, if your head's saying, what are you throwing in there for? Sometimes you gotta do it. Hello off. That looks like better, maybe. Yeah, it could be better. Yes, he is. Oh, yeah, he's a little yes, better. Yes, he's better. He's a little better. Nice, yeah, buddy. That's a good one. Yeah. Now you're getting it. A little cruiser. That's fast bigger than you think, that fish. Yeah, I think it is. Eh? Better get down to the first floor. <laughs> <laughs> we got a net, you know, if you want a net. Yeah, I know. You don't want to net these things. Do you? No. Well, is, nah. he, over, is he over three pounds? Yes. Yeah? You got the net, kid. <laughs> nice fish. You don't need a net. There you go. Lean, eh? Very lean. Big male or post-spawn female? What do you think? I'd say big male. Yeah, I would too. That definitely looks like a male. Lean and mean. Good one, bud. Yes. Drop shotting? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that would be uh, that would be a male for sure. Long, lean, a little uh, little round forehead on him. Very cool. Bye bye. Was that my bait? Males do not eat for up to four, five, or even six weeks while they spawn and protect the nest. But get this, they absorb water so they look big and thus can ward off predators. Because male smallmouth are so important for nest protection, they're one of the very few fish where the male grows as big as the female and often bigger. So when anglers catch a large smallmouth and say, look at how big she is, there's a great chance it's a male. He did come up for it, I told out. you. It's not a bad fish. Not a bad fish. Yeah. Not bad at all. That was yeah. cool watching the crowd. That was awesome. That's funny. This fish was in a crevice. Both of us were laughing when I threw that. We were both laughing. I was laughing at myself. <laughs> that was neat. Now there's something to learn. He came up, he was ready for it, right? I mean, it looks like a relatively small little crevice in that rock, but look. <laughs> Oh, that's a good fish. That's a good fish, man. That I is like cool. him. Her, it. Nice one, buddy. Ooh. That, and that fish was aggressive to move up that far. Yeah. Sure. I won't laugh at you next time when you, when yeah. you should throw something in there. <laughs> oh, that is so that funny. That was awesome. You know, and that's the, the power of a nice slow dropping bait too. Yeah, no kidding. You know kidding. what I mean? It just bright color. It just he came up out of there, came out of this crevice. And whoosh, if you just watch it come over, swim it five feet and grab it. <laughs> oh my God, buddy, that fish is big. There we go. Nice. <laughs> that was so neat. The best part of it, I mean, it's not a huge fish by any means, but but. The way that fish came out of that crevice, it was just so cool and just shows you that when you're fishing shallow water fish, you, you sometimes you got to throw it. Even if, it, if your head's saying, what are you throwing in there for? Sometimes you got to do it because they are an ambush predator. Obviously this thing was sitting in ambush waiting for something to go by and timing was right. Perfect time, perfect place. And there she be. Fantastic. We were about to leave the bay. I know. We turned back. We saw these. We saw the big dark crevice and said, "Okay, let's get in there." Oh, that is so cool. I said, "I'll take you in, and you hit it." 
Here you go. And you know what the best part of that fish was? Watching her come out, just go straight for your bait. Now what's he doing in there? There's no nest there, so no, who knows what? No, it no, is. that fish was not was not uh, yeah. nesting. No, just hanging out, eating maybe. Maybe he's in there no, foraging. I'll tell you what, he was on the prowl for that thing. He got that like yeah. boom. He was waiting. So he must have been in there foraging. Right? Yeah. Maybe crayfish, something. I don't know. The Weird. perfect little spot to hide too, right? Well, it is. It is. Won't be passing up any more crevasses. I'll tell you that. You like them, don't you? <laughs> got him. Look at how white he is. I know. Wow. Like Actually, he's a good fit. Pale as can be. Yeah. To get to today's early season smallmouth bass fishing, we first drove north on Highway 400 to Highway 69. We then turned northwest on Highway 17. We finally arrived at our destination, Lake Lozon Resort, which sits on the north side of Highway 17 at the east end of the lake. Early season smallie fishing is still relatively new around this area, so why not take advantage of it? Lake Lozon is said to have some giant fish in it. As stated in this episode, a large portion of Zone 10 in the Algoma region has introduced this open season into the regulations. Moving further north, Zone 2 through 9 also have all year no closed bass seasons. When looking at the zone map, you can clearly see that over half and maybe two thirds of Ontario has no closed season on bass fishing. However, we don't think this should be a license to catch fish on beds. Uh, those are definitely predators working that ball. And there's some big hooks down here too. Wow, that's uh, the gold mine right there, Mr. Bowman. Let's see if we can catch one of them suckers. Got him. I can't tell how big he is, Ant. <laughs> I think he's not bad, is he? He's all right. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty good. He's not, look at how white he is. I know. Wow. Like Actually, pale. he's a good fish. Pale as can be. Yeah. Just spit my shad shape out he, and hardly fighting. Like unbelievably wow. lethargic in this cold water. Well, yeah, I mean. Now the water just turned, would you say 61? 61, yeah. 61, apparently on this lake, when it gets to that 61 degree mark, they start moving in again. They've been in once already this year. And now we're looking like he's gonna move in again. Well, yeah, this is a good fish. Is he a three? He's definitely a three, there's no doubt about that. Oh, he's more than three, I think. Can't but, believe how oh, white yeah. he is. <laughs> eh? Can't believe how pale. I know. He's over three by far. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Nice. Come here, mama. <laughs> you want the net? Not now. There you go. Nice fish, buddy. That's over three, buddy. Yeah. Leaned right out, too. Look right? at that. Leaned right out. Would that be the male, Ange? Could be. If that's the male, could you imagine when the female comes in for this fish? Wow. Yeah, that could be. I'm pretty sure that would be the male. As skinny as that is right there. So That's they're, cool. They're just moving in at that 61 degree mark, water mark. Look at that fish. Gorgeous. Now, if you get those fish, you know, what Ange and I do, we try to go along here fast as we can, look for followers, look for fish. You can see them roaming and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, you cast them or, you know, cast a jerk bait or something to get a follow. Then you can throw, follow it up with a drop shot like I just used. Gorgeous fish. But that water temperature is everything this time of year. Water temperature and then the moon phase for the for the spawn. So that's the beauty of this uh, this open season all year. We get to fish these things here now in northern Ontario, and you can't do it in southern Ontario. It's perfectly legal. You just got to be ethical about it, right, Ange? You got to. You have to be your own fisheries manager. Exactly. But it's it's, it's fun. It's an opportunity that you can do. It's not far away, really. So I like that. Was fun. Nice. Good one. Today's hotspot is a staging point on Lake Lozon that smallmouth bass set up on early in the spring. The waypoint on your screen will get you there. Timing is everything on spots like this for early season smallies. Try casting a suspending jerkbait towards the bank and retrieve it in a medium speed pop and stop fashion. Since most of the fish at this time are still lethargic due to the cold water, almost all of your hits will come on the pause. If the jerkbait fails to produce or the bass stop hitting it, then work the bottom with a three to three and a half inch tube jig or just off the bottom with a small drop shot rig. 
these baits will work throughout the lake on other potential early spring staging areas. For more hot spots like this one, check out fishingcanada.com. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Prince Craft Boats, dominate the waters. Garmin Pan Optics, all seeing sonar. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Closed captioning for this episode was brought to you by FishingCanada.com, the gateway to your next fishing adventure. Come on.